Hello everybody, welcome to an interactive session with professional mixed martial artist Thad Jean who is all set to make his PFL debut. First of all, glad to have you here Thad, so thanks for joining. And thanks like, for having me, appreciate it. Like pleasure so mine. So you finally have a big fight on board, you're about to make your PFL debut which is going to be your like a landmark step in the United States of mixed martial art domain. So what's going on to your mind right now? Nothing much except for the same thing that's always been going on in my mind for a fight. I have to go in there and do what I've always wanted to do and win. Just make a statement. Make sure that once you get into the cage, that once you leave the cage, that people understand that you're there for a reason. So like people who actually have followed you through your career and people who have followed the American Mixed Martial Arts scenario, they know that you're not just a prominent fighter inside the cage, but you are also an entertainer and you've got pretty good mic, mic skills, I, I must say. So like you. you've presented yourself in a very different way throughout your interviews. And like, how do you plan on presenting yourself at PFL, not just inside the cage, but with your mic skills and press conferences? Like, do you have any special plans of putting it out to the mainstream audience? I don't know. Uh, I think whatever comes out of my mouth comes out of my mouth. I do have to control the cursing sometimes. But hey, if if my opponent was a nice guy, then I'll be respectful. But if the opponent comes at me and he says anything crazy, then then you'll be able to see my slick comments and the way I talk when it comes to people like that. But if anything, I want to be a, a lovable guy, a, a lovable guy just in general. You know, someone that people could be behind, someone that people could love, chanting, someone that. People are like, how can you not love this guy? How can you not like that? You know, how can you not like the Silverback? You know, that's the kind of guy I want to be. But it's actually hard for your opponents to love you because of a person who just knocks people out, like four fights, three stoppage wins. It's hard to love you as a fighter. Like if you're an opponent, it's hard to love you. So I just want to know your mindset about it. Like you have got a clean record, although you're in the early years of your career, but this is a brilliant start. Like four fights. Thank you. Four wins, three stoppage wins. Like how do you do that like as a fighter obviously you we know that you are a knockout artist you are great at putting out submissions but do you think that you are a fighter who can also like comfortably go around and do the full length fights yeah and that and that that that, that that's what i was talking about uh, last is that um i i'm happy that i had this last this previous this last fight that i just had because i went the full length and I wasn't, uh, I wasn't tired. And it, it was great that I had it and uh, a good big promotion, but it wasn't, it's not PFL. You know, I didn't have it in such a huge promotion like PFL and the, I didn't gas out. And I, now I have that experience knowing that I can be confident in my cardio when it comes to if I need to go distance with some person, you know what I mean? If I have to keep sticking around another round, maybe I have to go another round. Maybe I didn't finish him in the first round. Maybe I have to go to the second round. Maybe I have to try to finish him there. And if I didn't go to the third, but at each round, I want to make sure that I've won the round before I go into the next one. And I and I perform at the max and top level each time I go in there or each round I go into, you know? So like talking about your PFL debut, like you're going to face Eric Eliquin, who is also an undefeated fighter, who has got seven wins in his record, and it's going to be a tough fight. And it's going to be it's it's an absolute 50 50 matchup, man. I, I just believe that it's not something that is like you have been defeated, you have cherry picked somebody or you're going to get into a tough or an easy opponent so it's it's going to be a tough fight so how are you planning what what are you planning how do you envision that fight happening how do i think it ends i think it ends with a, a knee to the face an uppercut or a roundhouse you know anything i think i tko him or knock him out within the first or second round um maybe off a counter or something but you know i see eric Alquin as someone who's cherry picked his opponents if anything you know, his opponents are coming up and uh, he's never faced a dog, you know, he's never been in a dog fight. It's someone against me, like, you know, you can, you can attempt to take me down. You can attempt to do this, but you take me down. My jujitsu is just as good. What are you going to do when your, your jujitsu gets canceled out? And now you have someone that's pounding on you the whole time. You know what I mean? What are you going to do when your, your tricks that worked on your last fight don't work on this fight? You punch somebody in the face and, oh, he doesn't back down. He comes forward the whole time. What are you gonna do then? Are you gonna break or are you gonna keep fighting? That's a that's a that's that's what I want to see. Is he gonna break? Am I gonna break him mentally in the fight or is he gonna keep coming? What is he gonna do? What can he bring to me? That's the question. What is he gonna be able to bring to me? I'll bring him everything. What will he bring me? That's a bold statement to make. I mean, obviously he has been a CFS so. former world champion, but you're unfazed by it. So you have already said that you are going to knock him out. 
so and so will you is it something that you will be gunning for from the initial round or will you wait and see how the fight turns out to be or are you no, yeah i i hear what you're saying and i don't want to i'm not going to tunnel vision by i'm not going to go tunnel vision into a fight that's how you that's how you miss opportunities if something else presents itself to me then i'll take it if submission presents itself to me i'm going to take it if i do have to go to this distance i'm going to win you and unanimous but it's going to again like i said it's going to be something that i i pick and piece them apart as you'll see when you see the fight it's going to be strategic it's going to be uh patient it's going to be me showing that I'm in control of the fight the whole time and and as he gets frustrated he'll do make mistakes and I'll capitalize on those mistakes so like you are a young boy like you're 24 years old already like rising to the fame and already in the spot of PFL so what inspired you most about PFL like because we know it's a new organization it, it has got its own te- technological advancement a million dollar paycheck for the winner so what inspired you most about PFL uh other than the money uh but- <laughs> you know, anyone, any, anyone can. You know, you go like out. You go to any other big promotion. The way you get those fights is making sure that you have a big following. You have a big name already under you. You know, uh, going. Sorry, my dog. Uh, so, <laughs> going into big promotions, you, like a PFL, every anyone has a shot. Even if you don't have a huge name for yourself, you have a shot to make a name for yourself. starting from the bottom starting into the challenger series and building your way up to the top and you know what i want to be i want to be the conor mcgregor that of this pfl society you know uh uh promotion as as conor mcgregor was to the ufc conor mcgregor brought the ice to the ufc and i want to bring the ice to the pfl so with that i'm i'm definitely going to make sure that i make a statement with each time i go into the ring making sure that i don't waste the opportunity i've gotten PFL and let everybody else see that they can get the same opportunity with PFL that they wouldn't have gotten with another big promotion. You know what I mean? Yeah, so like you've already mentioned a lot of times about being a honest Conor McGregor fan. Like you've said that even though oh, people are like going against him. So what inspired you to become a Conor McGregor fan? I mean obviously you know that he has been on his prime in his early days of his career. So was it his charisma was it his business acumen or was it his fighting skills that inspired you to become a mcgregor fan everything he was he's smart he's like he was he's like um he was like mayweather in a way you know you in the beginning you have to go through dog fights but once you get to the point where you don't have to go through dog fights now it becomes business now you start making the shots now you start calling the shots now you start talking big now you start being what you have to be until You, now you start saying what you have to say to rise to the fame, rise to the occasion, and once you get there, he made the statements. He went out there and actually won the fights. He didn't, he didn't go out there and lose. I mean, of course, at the end he lost, but that was after he made the money. Who's not trying to make the money? I mean, I guess you could say you're trying to make a name for yourself, but at the end of the day, that fame and that name, there's a bunch of famous people on Instagram that's still making zero dollars. You know what I mean? Doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's the. Uh, the money that you can bring for your family and your friends and the people around you now like conor you are a welterweight fighter you're going to compete at the welterweight division and the pfl and conor mcgregor has been in the ufc's welterweight division he has been in the lightweight division and right now he has teased a move to the middleweight division so being his fan and being a mixed martial artist do you what do you suggest like if you are going to give an advice to mcgregor which weight class would you prefer for him like at this particular point because we have seen him bulked up like he's really jacked up at this point yeah man man looks like he's on pds or something something <laughs> some type of uh enhancement but she <laughs> definitely but i think he should go back down to 155 you know uh and and actually just take over that weight class again he should he should take out i mean he he's had some problems when going against poirier but that's that's him not being I feel like he should start back to like okay let's take these fights slowly again like let's build our confidence well not even confidence let's build our experience back up to what it used to be because going out and going into the business part being a family man and you see that could take a lot away from what you've already built up and accumulated as a fighter so if he starts back then you don't have to start off with square one because he's kind of a gregor let's take uh the number six seed the the fifth seed the fourth let's not go for a champion at number one and number two yet you know let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves let's go let's build our way up and just like he did when he went against um cowboy Cerrone you know that 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 was a good fight for him because you know no offense to cowboy but you know cowboy is not 
in his prime anymore. You know, let's let's take some fights like that. Let's go against people like him, people on their way out of the UFC. Let's 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 build our resume back up. And then let's go into people like Chandler. Because you know, Chandler has knockout power and we're not trying to go against Chandler. And he's gonna wanna go against do a dog fight. And you know, we don't we don't need dog fights now. We need we need smart fights. And what what I'd say to McGregor. So, like, if you uh, uh, imagine, like, uh, Conor McGregor has already lost two of his last fights. He hasn't won a fight since 2020. Do you feel that if he loses his return bout, like, is it completely over for him? Or do you still want to see him compete in any sort of combat? I mean, for those who are, aren't really his fans, his fans would say, okay, yeah, he's over with, he's done, he's washed up. And yeah, you can say that, but again, at the end of the day, he's made his money in the sport and he's done what he wanted to do in the beginning. So you should give him credit for that. But like I said, if he does lose, and there is always that possibility, he should just go, again, just take the take the smaller fights before going against a huge, I mean, they're all big fights, but let's not take, the, again, the, the top five, the top three, the top two, the champion. Let's not disrespect what, how they've already gotten to that level. Let's again, let's work up build your way back up and, to, and then become the champion like you were or the double champ like you were, you know? It's obviously, it's prominent that Conor McGregor has got a huge influence on you and you've all, you've also mentioned about Demetrius Johnson being one of your favorite fighters. So oh, go. Yeah, he's it's, a go. It's Conor McGregor, it's Demetrius Johnson. I know if you are asked to make your own Mount Rushmore of MMA, these two names are going to be there. Conor McGregor and Demetrius Johnson. So if you no are doubt. Name two more fighters who would make up your Mount Rushmore. Who it would be, other than Demetrius Johnson and McGregor? John Jones. And let me not make the, the John Jones. These three for sure. I just don't want to make the last choice too quick. Let me see uh, who else do I think? Because I love Kamari. Kamari is such a such a statement fighter went from being uh, nobody wants to watch me, I'm just a wrestler to becoming a striker who knocks people out with his jabs and breaking jaws, you know what I mean? So, mm. maybe probably you know what? I love, I love Jose Aldo as well though. Yeah, yeah. You know? well, so what do you say about GSP? Like, wouldn't you put GSP in that list? No. Oh, why yeah, I don't know, yeah. this doesn't do it for me. It doesn't do it for me, you know, I, I respect him because He's really, he's great. He's definitely great, but you know, I think fighters. There are some. There are fighters these days who can, for welterweights these days, who would be able to beat GSP. You know, he he was a welterweight. I think Kamaru was in beats uh, GSP. Do you think Kamaru was one beats GSP? Okay, that's an interesting statement. So a lot of people have said that Khabib Nurmagomedov versus GSP would have been an intense, instant classic. Do you think Khabib could have beaten GSP at 170 pounds? Um, I want to say he, he would have beat him because GSP also had that, had that, um, that grind and pressure that, um, Nwaganetov had, but, you know, he doesn't really have striking. I wouldn't say Khabib has striking in comparison to, um, GSP, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it come to that, it come to that. Let's, let's see if you can actually strike him now. You know, you can do the wrestling, but GSP can also wrestle and get out of the scramble as well. So, can you wrestle? Or you can wrestle. I mean, you can wrestle, but can you strike now? And GSP definitely has a strike in Khabib. So, like, when you talk about striking, I now I understand why you, did you pick John Jones as one of your favorites. Because he's one of the most complete fighters in the world. Kamar Usman is also on the verge of becoming one. So, like... You have already mentioned about having your jiu-jitsu. You have already got that knockout power in your arms. And you you already have mentioned jo how John Jones is one of your favorite fighters. Now, Jones being one of the m most prime fighters is the reason that he's absolutely complete. Like, he has got wrestling. He has got striking. He has got this great fight IQ. And Kamar Usman is also on the verge of becoming one. So, when you envision yourself becoming a world champion probably in the future, what are the forms of mixed martial art you really want to want see yourself get, become an expert on? Because you already have got jiu-jitsu in yourself. Uh, it's just striking and wrestling. Just I right. mean, I'm already I'm already really good at striking and my jiu-jitsu and my takedown defense. But now I want to be able to put the pressure on and just like you know, just I've been working on my 
wrestling. You know, I have really good wrestling. Since I, I had my one loss, my second loss in my amateur career to, um, what's his name? Robin Ferraldo, that's in Bellator. And he beat me because of his, his takedowns. He, you know, we were striking. It was a good fight back and forth. But in the end, he, he was taking me down. And, and, you know, at that point, in my career, I didn't have no wrestling. All I did was bleed in my jiu-jitsu, but you know, when jiu-jitsu gets captured out most of the time when you have a good wrestler, you know what I mean? So the, the best thing you could do is become anti-wrestle, anti-wrestle and, or pick up on your jiu-jitsu and keep it striking and beat the person up. And that's that. That's my opinion on when it comes to the fight game. You have great wrestling and, well, great anti-wrestling, you'll be great. If you have, if they take you down, make sure your jujitsu is up to par, to making sure that if you're on your back, you you aren't, you aren't timid, you aren't scared, and if you can stay from going on the ground, make sure your striking is the at the highest it can be. Now coming back to your TFL debut, TFL is absolutely a new format of mixed martial arts. It's not like Bellator, it's not like UFC, it's not it's not a never-ending process. You get to accept it like it's a season-based format just like nba or any other uh, yeah. like ipl or any other format of sport so it's really going to be a different journey so does it affect the preparation of a fighter when you compete and enter into a season form for, like a league it's a league-based format it's not like ufc where you get to step in so does it really impact a fighter's preparations compared to the other leagues i mean it is a lot when you when you think about having to fight you know because when I win this challenger, I'll have to fight five times in a year. You know what I mean? To get to that, to get to that melee. But I mean, it all depends on the mindset of that fighter. You know, if you, if you, if this is what you want, then who cares? Who cares what the format is? As long as they got a fighter for you, then you're good. Your job is to fight as a fighter. Your job is to fight. Your job is to train. Your job is to be prepared when when someone calls you up and get ready to fight. So, I don't know if it, it would be different. If anything, it'll be what we've probably always needed because you go to uh, promotions like the UFC and uh, Bellator and things like that, and you may or one championship, and you may not have a fight and you're contracted in with them for years. You know what I mean? So, that's my opinion on it. Like. It's really interesting to know that you've got a really different perspective on all the other aspects and you're really open to accepting mixed martial arts in a mainstream and global format. But as a mixed martial arts fan, I would say that we often get deprived of the crossover fights. Like, see, football fans, they're fortunate to see French leagues, teams of French league collide with teams of Spain. But as mixed martial arts fans, we don't get to see Bellator do a crossover with UFC or PFL. No. So is it something that would intrigue you as a fighter? Would you like to participate in do a cross-promotion event? And if yes, who is the fighter you would like to face from a different promotion? And that, and that's, and that, and that is a great question. Because when you, when you talk about becoming a world champion, that when you become a world champion, it's more of you beat all the champions in each major promotion. You can't say you're a world champion if you've just won a belt in a promotion. You say, I'm a champion at PFL, I'm a champion at belt UFC, I'm a champion. That That is the more correct way to say these things. But when you have things like cross league, then you could actually claim I am a world champion because you beat the big people in the big promotion, biggest promotions. And I would love to do that. I think that would be the best step in uh, martial arts, uh, mixed martial arts, and promotions and anything career-wise, business-wise, that'll be the best thing for them to start doing cross, cross uh, fighting. And I, and who would I like to fight? I would say any of, I'd love to fight more UFC than Bellator. I'm not nothing against Bellator. I just know more about the UFC now and their fighters. And I think um, UFC has super high level fighters. That would be amazing and super fun to be able to to fight one day. I, that'll be such a cool thing, you know. Everyone's gone up, raised, wa raised up watching the UFC if you've been a really big um, MMA fan. You know what I mean? So that'll be awesome. It's like obviously UFC is still ruling the market, but PFL it's still so new and it's still like within just such a short period of time, PFL has come up and it's really on the same level with the UFC at this point. I would really yeah. believe. 
a lot of UFC fighters they have come down to PFL and they are really facing trouble like Anthony Pettis couldn't win it, Roddy McDonald. So PFL really also has got high level fighters and being a part of it really yeah. helps a lot. So how long like what do you think like how many years is it going to take for you to become to hold a world title in professional like as you mentioned world title would be wrong to call it but maybe just a title like i would call it a world title but in that sense like how many no, years no 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 you... you're good you're good i hear you why not this this 2023 2023 so you're planning to get that million i understand that this is like christmas eve for you but your fight is just almost one month away from now so you're yeah. i would believe that you're already into that preparation mode so is it going to be a tough christmas for you like planning on all the diets and all preparations fight preparations or are you really enjoying it no i'm i'm going to enjoy myself because this is not my it's not my first rodeo it's it's just honestly another fight if i think of it anything more than what it is then maybe that'll become a uh, hindrance to me so it's going to be what it is and it's all it is it's just another fight i've been through it before i've been through the weight cut i've been through the fight camps if anything i've added more to it because i'm going at a higher level so it's 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 the journey is growing and becoming what i've always wanted it to be so i'm happy here you know i'm ready to go i'm ready to rock i'm ready to do what I, i've been born to do what god has made me to do also like oh i know it's you're absolutely energized for your upcoming fight you're confident that you're going to knock this guy out and you're an undefeated fighter and we have all grown up seeing that fighters don't love to lose their zeros like it's a dream for every fighter and but imagine if someday you have to face a loss how are you going to face it obviously it strikes your mind to mind to like israel adesanya recently lost Floyd Mayweather obviously is one of those fighters who never lost a fight. Joe Calzaghe is one of them. But we have seen fighters lose their zero. Khabib Nurmagomedov, he exited the MMA with a clean record. But probably a lot of people say that he might have lost a fight today in today's time. So if you have to face a loss someday, how do you deal with it? If I if I ever lose a fight, I'll go into a very brief, very very sadness, near depression, for sure. <laughs> You know, it's the fight. We're fighters. You can say all you want, but so losing sucks. People say, "Oh, it's just you know, you live and you learn." But nobody goes into that cage with the mindset of we're going to live and we learn. Nobody, not one fighter, has gone into the uh, to the cage with the mindset of okay, it doesn't matter if I lose. I had a good time. First of all, it's not a good time to get kicked in the face. It's not a good time. It's a it's 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 about the experience and it's about. It's about well, it is pretty fun. I'm not gonna lie to you. Actually, it is fun. But at the end of it, the person bruises. That's not a fun time. The recovery time isn't fun. You know what I mean? But the recovery time is much easier to handle when I won the victory. It's it's it sucks when I've lost. Now I have to deal with not being able to walk. Now I have to deal with having to be on crutches. Oh, I can't use my arm because I lost. But if I won and I had to deal with that, I don't care. I'm still skipping. I'm still doing all these things because I won, and I, I I'm not going. To, that's why I train. That's why I want to stay ahead of the game. I'm not going to wait until someone shows me that I need to have more cardio. I need to have more wrestling. I need to have more striking before I say it was a live and learn. I'm going to live and learn in training. I'm going to live and learn through others telling me, hey, this you need to pick up on this, you know, so that I don't lose my zero and that people who have the zero on their record. Can make me that one. You know what I mean? I'm gonna be their one. So that's what I have to say to that. I, you will definitely go into depression if you lose that for sure. For a little bit, but it'll happen. So obviously, it's absolutely sure that you're a hardcore mixed martial artist fan, and you grew up watching all these great fights, great fighters. So if I just ask you to pick three of the best fights in all of combat, be it boxing, be it kickboxing, best three fights that really impress, like you can watch it any given day. So which? Of the like, what fights would you pick? Oh damn! Here we go. Uh, let's see. I will pick. That was a great fight. I think Yan versus Pedian versus uh, Pedian versus um, what's his name? I just said it. Jose Haldo. The only reason it, it was a one-eight fight, it was one-sided, but just how technical and beautiful this guy can strike. And can move. It's 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 immaculate. I will say also John Jones and uh, the Swedish guy. I forget his name. So John Jones and probably Dominic. No, it was a lopsided fight. Daniel Cormier. 
No, 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 no. It's a, it's a Swedish guy. The only fight that it was super close uh, with John Alexander, Jones. Alexander, Alexander uh, Gustafsson. Yeah, Gustafsson. Yeah, yeah, Gustafsson, yeah. man. The first fight was been Jones and Gustafsson. Definitely. That yeah. was crazy. Oh, yes, the first fight. The second fight was a close out. But uh, those two, and then I will probably say... Um, what would be my last fight? Conor McGregor versus Diaz. The first one what was ended. obviously the second one, man. Both of them. Both, Both of them, them had me had me like on my toes. But I guess the first one was not too much. But the second one that went the distance was a great fight. The Conor McGregor and Diaz, they have been teased. Like they have teased a tri- potential trilogy bout on several occasions. And but we already know that Nate Diaz have exited the UFC. So do you really yeah. feel that a trilogy is ever going to happen? And if yes, at what format? Because we all all know that Nate Diaz is going to go for a potential boxing exhibition or a boxing debut or something like that. So, do you think Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz three will happen? Sorry, say that. Repeat that question one more time. The like, ending of it. Yeah. So Nate Diaz and Conor McGregor after their the rematch, they have been teasing a potential trilogy fight between them. But Nate Diaz has already left the UFC, and right now he can enter into the boxing ring. But McGregor is still with the UFC. So, do you really feel that we will ever see that trilogy fight between the two? And if yes, yeah. at what format? Okay, you you don't feel like they are going to fight again? No, it, it wouldn't be smart at all for McGregor anyways. We all know that Diaz has a chin that no one can crack. And McGregor has been out of the fight game forever. And we all know that McGregor doesn't have a gas tank. So, if anything, is not smart at all for McGregor to take a fight against someone who has unlimited gas and can take a punch and can just keep coming back and forth. Because if he takes you to the ground, he will choke you again like the first fight. So... No, it's, it's stupid. Just leave it off as a win. And it was a great fight. You made a lot of money because of the pay-per-views that people bought. So just leave it at that. So that's my opinion. Also, like, if you're really a fan, of course, people who really make smart moves and moves that really get, get some money. So if you are ever offered a potential crossover to the boxing world, like probably against a YouTuber, because YouTube boxing has really got its prominence yeah. from the so if you are ever given a chance to go against someone like KSI or Deji or Dylan Dennis or any of those YouTubers would you entertain that chance oh of course I mean at the end of the day it's a lot of, they make a lot of, make millions for what for exhibition matches of course I'll take it of course and I don't think a YouTuber I know a YouTuber is not going to be in boxing and, and even to that point I would love to actually go do some boxing um in between my mixed martial arts career because I love boxing itself as well. You know, I've, I've been taking up boxing. I've been doing a lot of boxing classes and I, and I, you know, I helped Vitor Belfort. That's one of the ways, that's one, that's how I met Vitor was because I helped him uh, get ready for his boxing exhibition that he was supposed to take. So, you know, I love boxing and the idea of boxing. I just love mixed martial arts more. And that's the only reason I'm doing this instead of boxing. You know what I mean? So if I get a chance to do boxing, if I can make a boxing career out of it too, you know, just starting off at 1-0, going and building my way up to becoming a title holder in boxing, I would love to do it. Yeah. So, like, enough of the combat talks. Also, Thad Gina, what I have realized is that you are an absolute entertainer and you also have your own YouTube channel, I believe. Like, you've just started, you like you promote it on your Instagram handle and, like, you've been hosting podcasts and also just give me an idea of how it struck your mind and how did you plan on starting that social media channel? Um, you know, be, 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 be an influencer as, as you see other people do, you know, be influenced, but also make your page something that is, um, interesting, someone that people would actually want to follow, you know, you know, you, you get, you, you just see, you just watch the influencers on how they do it and then you try to pick it back up on how they do it and make it the same for yourself. Of course, it's a little tough because some of the influencers make it a full-time job and I'll make it a full-time job. I make fighting more a full-time job, but eventually I'll I'll be able to, you know, have enough content put out there and become someone who blows up on bigger platforms like Barstool or, you know, my knockouts are on Barstool or they're on ESPN or they're on Worldstar. And then those will have traction that'll bring more people to look at my page and see that, oh, this guy's pretty interesting. I want to follow him. And then as they follow me, more sponsorships come and more sponsorship come, more modeling and more modeling. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> so you really, you really have got your plan sorted for your fight game, for your, like, about entertaining the people. And any special message you want to deliver to the fight fans before your like PFL debut, much ever at PFL debut, I would say your fans, people all over the world who are planning to see you. It's more of if 
the Silverback Nation. I appreciate the Silverback Nation, my fans who have been supporting me since the beginning and who have been with me since uh, my first loss in amateur career and to my undefeated record within my pro debut, my pro career. Now, if you're not a part of the nation, then this is a part of the nation. This is the nation you want to be a part of because we're rising all the way to the top in PFL. You're going to see it. PFL, the celebrity panel, the fans there, everyone's going to see that Silverback is the guy that they want to be behind. Silverback, when I do my... When I do my chest... That's pump, a war want, cry, actually. Yeah, my war cry. When I do that, when I do that, I want to see... <laughs> I want to see everyone in the crowd doing it as well because they see that, hey, this is the signal. This is this is the guy. And when, when I go into the cage, it's the for sure win. So... 2023 is going to be a stacked year for you. Hopefully, you have already got big things on the line and you have already made your mind about how you're going to take things ahead in your career. You've got your own idols. So, we've got nothing but well wishes for you. And sorry, thank sorry. you so much for taking out some time and joining with Inside Sports, Tad Gene. I hope we will connect again soon ahead of your fight. Till then, stay well and stay safe. Awesome. I appreciate that. I hope you have a great day. Great night. Bye. Bye. Great night. Thank you. Thank you so much. And hopefully we'll connect again soon. Yeah, there we go. Have a great night.